What's up guys, this is Devin from Devin Talks Tabletop and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing or an open that of McKee? McKees? I think it's McKee. And I purchased this specifically because I said that last time. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say specifically because anymore this video. I purchased it because it was from Side Room Games and because people mention it in the same breath as Black Sonata, which I is, is a solo game I just recently purchased in the last few months and played and have really enjoyed. And I like the idea of these small box solitaire games that take mechanics that I really enjoy and compress them into an experience for one player. And I've heard a lot of good things about this. Every time I hear it mentioned, it's with praise. It's not with any complaints at all. And if this is the first time you're watching me ever, I apologize for this hyper aggressive looking knife. This actually was something that I found in the first rent house that I ever cleaned out in one of my high school jobs in the summer. Um, still have it. Um, use it as a letter opener typically, but I can't find my pocket knife. I don't know where my, my pocket knife, either of my, or my Swiss Army knife, I don't know where either of them are. So I have this very intense looking, um, you know, stab you dagger uh, going on. And um, yeah, I'm going to try to be as precise or clinical with its use as possible. But so Black Sonata is a solo game and it is a solo hidden movement game. And the way that you play and operate in that is that you are trying to ascertain the identity of the dark lady, of Shakespeare's lover. And she flits all across London going to different locations. And your goal is to track her down and then not only find where she's at, but figure out what her traits are, the type of woman she is, the type of lady she is. And if you can do that, you can win. Um, it's harder than it sounds though. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun and a small experience. That's hidden movement though. Maki is, is worker placement. And so to give you some flavor, engage the Nox, not the la 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 Engage the Nazi occupation of France in La Petite Guerre, which is the, that's French for, I believe, the small war. So I'm assuming they're talking about guerrilla warfare. To throw off the yoke of the oppressors and free your homeland. I'm pretty sure that's, I think, Guerre, or uh, that's probably not at all how you pronounce it in French. I'm coming from like a Spanish background in terms of language that I know somewhat. And I think Guerre means war um, and Petite, you know, small. So I think it means the small war. Anyways, throw off the yoke of the oppressors and free your homeland. So you're talking about Nazi occupied France. Um, I wonder if this is in the the puppet government. Is Maquis where the pupper, puppet government was in southern France? Is that where that was? That might have been. Either way, Maquis is a solitaire worker placement game with variable goals and a playtime of approximately 20 minutes, which is awesome. The player places his resistant agents on spaces around town to achieve his goals, blowing up trains, uh, publishing underground newspapers, but at the same time, Melisse collaborators and Wehrmacht soldiers patrol the area. Agents who can't make it back to the safe house at the end of the day are arrested and never seen again. So I'm wondering if you have a certain amount of like multiple workers, and I guess if you aren't careful, you can slowly lose workers over the course of the game. That is just a complete guess. But the idea that this takes, you know, 20 to 30 minutes to play is just exceptional. I actually got inspired to start buying some of these and playing them for myself. I think I started with maybe Friday, and I've since expanded to a lot of solo games. I've got Final Girl over there, which I need to jump back into. I want to play some more Black Sonata. I need to open up a couple other games in there. I've got the Imperium Classics and Legends, and I haven't touched those yet. But I want to. But anyways, I was saying I timestamp. I was saying I got inspired because of Artem Safarov, who is the designer behind uh, 
Unbroken, which I also bought um, to support him because I think that's like a really sad story. He had essentially, you know, a bad luck of the dice where the people that were managing the game that he designed had a very terrible, poorly managed and, you know, roughly dishonest Kickstarter. And it put a bad taste in everybody's mouth. But you know what he has been doing? He has been spending a lot of his extra money over the years to simply ship out games. He has a lot of them personally, and he is spending his own money to ship them out, which I think is just the mark of such a good person when you kind of get dealt this bad hand of cards and you just stomach it and you deal with it and you do the thing that sucks, even when people are complaining. There's a lot of people that complain and have rated that game very poorly. Um, I think uncharacteristic. I mean, it was one of the, like, the before Final Girl and Chip Theory games with, like, Victor, uh, Hoplomachus Victorum and stuff like that. It was one of the highest, I think, funding solo uh, games. And I just put a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And, you know, that sucks. That sucks specifically for Artem because I would hate, you know, I've done some design work over the last few six months or whatever. And, man, it would suck to just get to a point where you finish a project that you care a lot about. And then because of something relatively outside of your control, the reputation of what you've done is tainted. And th that kind of sucks. That sucks a lot. And he's been really stand up about it. And, you know, he, I don't think I've ever seen him get snippy or mad in the comments on Facebook and stuff like that. He just calmly tries to help people get their games. And, you know, he pays for it out of his own pocket. Uh, so go, go give him a happy shout out. Uh, Cause he's shared in um, the solo board gaming. I think he takes his, son or his daughter to piano lessons, I think. I think it's piano lessons, um, to music lessons. And he plays in a pub and he plays solo games uh, while, you know, getting a drink and, and a snack or a meal or whatever in the pub while, they, while he waits for his kid. And I think that's awesome. And you get all of these cool things. Oh, all of these cool things that insert in here. And then you get other pieces that insert in here. I'm so excited by all of the insertable stuff. But so Side Room Games is one of the people who helped publish uh, Black Sonata. And they have kind of this very small box design for Black Sonata too. I bet if I went in there, they probably are the same box size. And let me see, does this have a, does this have anything up top? Now we're gonna use my hyper aggressive military knife. Um, Eh. I'm trying to very carefully just poke through. There we go. All right. So, yeah, worker placement game. You've got a bunch of little wooden meeples here. Very excited about that. Uh, free the resistance leader. Destroy AA guns. Melise headquarters. Bomb the barracks. I love World War II. Um, my mom is a, uh, like historian, history lover, who uh, spent a lot of time and a lot of education on that. And military history was a particular area of interest for her. And so she kind of passed on that love for military history to me. Um, and especially like spy and espionage stuff. And, you know, so this kind of like resistance, guerrilla warfare is, is very interesting to me. And you know what's interesting is I haven't actually seen a lot of entertainment like movies or anything about, ooh, about Nazi-occupied France. Uh, you know, for some reason there's this like very kind of popular undercurrent of like, yeah, France is like weaklings in American, you know, like historical perspective. And so, uh, which I think is very stupid um, of, of this country. Um, but 
Yeah, I'm definitely interested in learning more by kind of seeing the world of this game. Uh, another game that I enjoy quite a bit with a lot of uh, rich theme is Black Orchestra from Starling Games. Um, and so Black Orchestra, you know, you're trying to do plots to destroy or, or kill Hitler. And so you're trying to do that without, without raising suspicion. And that can be difficult. Is this in plastic? Figured it was in plastic. Aggressive knife to the rescue. And so I'm not going to do that. That's going to leave a scored mark on the... There we go. Yeah, so I, I'm interested to see how this goes and what kind of, uh, what kind of integration the theme has to the mechanics. So... Got a lot of cards here, small little board, and this is reminiscent of my experience with Black Sonata as well. There's a small board of roughly this size that is the size of the London map that you run around. And so, extra, we'll just put that extra baggie in there. They're good about that. There was an extra baggie in Black Sonata too, which is good because you always want extra baggies rather than not enough baggies. Um, we'll see if that stuff's gonna fit. Is that gonna fit? I think it'll fit. All right, yeah, so that's my key. I'm very interested in seeing how this game goes. I think it's going to be a fun one and can't wait to jump in. Golden Geek nominee back when it came out. I think this is it. Was it 2019? Can't remember. Can't remember. It's been out for a little bit, I think. But yeah, super excited to play it. Super excited to try it out. Gigamech Games, Golden Geek nominee. Um, man, I've just got like, I've got stuff bothering me. I've got, I've got this like splinter there. And then I've got, um, Did I get it? No, don't think I got it. If I had my, if I had my Swiss Army knife, I could get the tweezers out and I could get this splinter. Daniel and I are currently demoing at the soon-to-be studio for kids planning and for play the game, and also for me. This will be a infrequent space that I film in once we get that studio up and running. So. Timestamp. Super excited about that. Super excited about that. Solo game. Can't wait to try it out. All right. I think we're done. Bye.